gonna talk specifically about Alpha, which is a layer one blockchain. And I'm going to talk about everything that you need to know to become a successful algorithm developer. So whenever you go to a new blockchain, it's like going to a new country, and to a, ne uh, to a country that you've never been before. You know, everything's new, everything's different. You know, I came to Lisbon for the first time um, for this conference, and I rented this apartment near the conference place. And the house owner showed me this key that I'd never seen before. And he just turned it, and he opened the door, you know, okay, I can do that, I'm smart enough. So, you know, I went out, got some groceries, came back, tried opening the door, and it wouldn't open. <laughs> and I stood there for 15, it's true story, three days ago, 15, for 15 minutes I was there trying to open this door, and I couldn't get it to open until my neighbor came out and helped me open it. <laughs> it was so foreign to me, that key was so foreign to me that I couldn't open a simple door. And the story is similar when it comes to blockchain. Whenever you come to a new blockchain, but even if you've worked in a different blockchain environment or you've never worked on blockchain before, there's so, so many things that is new and foreign to you that is so easy to get lost. So today, we're gonna explore this country, this blockchain called Algorand, and see what you need to know to build on this blockchain. Hello everyone, my name is Chris Kim. I am a developer relations advocate for the Algorand Foundation, and my job is to help developers uh, learn how to build on the Algorand blockchain. Algorand, for those of you who don't know, is a layer one blockchain that's fast, secured, and scalable. Founded by a renowned cryptographer, MIT professor, Sylvia McCauley, who's invented technologies like zero-knowledge proofs and verifiable random functions, which are both technologies widely used in the blockchain industry. So I'm gonna go through a series of questions that you may have when you come to Algorand and want to build on it. So the first question, you might be asking, so what's unique about Algorand? Because all of these blockchains have different designs and different features that you can use as a developer. Algorand is a non-EVM chain. Now EVM stands for Ethereum Virtual Machine. And it's one of the most popular virtual machines within the blockchain industry that a lot of blockchain uses. Um, well, Algorand went, decided to go a different approach. So when Sylvia McCauley created Algorand, he wanted to have a different virtual machine that was faster, more efficient, and more powerful than the EVM. Because Algorand wanted to achieve something greater. We wanted to build a global financial infrastructure, and that was their initial goal back in 2019. ASAs. So if you want to create your own digital asset, cryptocurrency, on the Algorand blockchain, we call those ASAs. Algorand Standard Assets. Now, if you've been in other blockchains like Ethereum, we call these assets ERC-20, ERC-721, and those are all standards that represent a smart contract. So to deploy, to create your crypto on these different chains, you need to deploy, write a smart contract, and deploy it on the blockchain. Now, there are two reasons why ASAs are better. One, it's easier for the developers. All you need to do is send an asset creation transaction to the blockchain, and boom, you have your own crypto. Whereas other blockchains, you have to write a smart contract. Now, writing a smart contract is not easy. And it's not easy to write a safe smart contract. So what, usually what we do is we write a smart contract and we hand it over to an auditing firm. And they, we pay them a lot of money to get these smart contracts audited. And even after it's audited, we can't guarantee that it's bug free. And if there's a security vulnerability in that smart contract, you're losing a lot of money. So ASAs, because it's built into the protocol, you're not deploying a smart contract. The ASAs has no security vulnerability as long as the algorithm blockchain is secured. Algorand also provide this powerful feature called atomic transfers. Now atomic transfers is a feature that allows you to execute multiple transactions simultaneously. Now why is this important? When you're building a blockchain application, you're most likely gonna be dealing with situations where your multiple parties are trading value. So I'm paying certain money or digital asset to get something back. Now, in our traditional internet environment, we do these kind of trades through Amazon. 
where they facilitate these trades so that both parties get what they want. But if I go online, find this random guy selling a PlayStation 5, which I've wanted for my last two years, and I'm excited, so I ask him, what's the price? And he says, $500. So I pay him $500, and he tells me, okay, I'll send the PlayStation 5 to you in a couple days. A couple days goes by, he disappeared, <laughs> and I lost $500. Now, why was that a problem? Because that transaction wasn't simultaneous. So I had to trust that this person was gonna send me that PlayStation 5. Well, on the blockchain, there is no Amazon. It's just a decentralized database that is not owned by anyone. So how do we ensure that this trade happens without trust? And for that to happen, those two transactions need to happen at the same time. So on other blockchains, if you wanna do this, you have to come up with complex logics like hash time lock contracts. And you need to define that to imp implement it in your smart contract. Well, on Algorand, it's built into the protocol and you can use this right out of the box. State proofs. Now this is a unique Algorand technology that allows two things. One, it makes all the data that's recorded on the Algorand blockchain post-quantum secure, meaning it's secured from quantum computers. Now the entire blockchain industry is very scared of quantum computers because when they come to reality, they can break most of the blockchains out there. Well, Algorand is future-proof. And we've secured our data with State Proof by using this technology called Falcon Keys. So if you're interested, definitely look up State Proof and you'll find a lot of interesting information. Second, State Proof allows Algorand blockchain to become interoperable with other blockchains without a middle bridge. Now, the way we connect two different blockchains today is by creating this middle layer called a bridge. And we use that bridge to send assets to different chains to use um, smart contracts, applications on a different chain. But this bridge has some history that shows that it's not a secure way of connecting block blockchains. Just in 2022, over $2 billion, $2 billion worth of crypto were stolen because of these bridges. So we need a better solution. And state proof, it allows two blockchains to be directly connected to each other without a bridge in the middle. Now this is a technology that's being actively developed right now. In the near future, um, when other blockchains implement state proofs, um, we will be able to connect all these chains without a bridge. Algorand has a unique consensus protocol called Pure Proof of Stake. And if you weren't here yesterday, I know this is gonna sound very boring, but bear with me. So Pure Proof of Stake, I'm gonna call it PPOS, so I don't say Pure Proof of Stake so many times, is a form of a consensus mechanism, which is a way blockchains validate new transactions. So you can think of blockchain as a chain of blocks, and each block contains a list of transactions. But as you add new transaction to this blockchain, um, you need a way for all of these computers running the blockchain to agree on what new transactions should come to the database. So that's what consensus protocol is. Now, depending on what the consensus protocol is for that blockchain, it affects um, the performance of the blockchain. Now, there's a famous uh, problem in the blockchain industry called the blockchain trilemma. And this was first stated by um, founder of Ethereum, Vitalik Buterin. And he claims that you cannot have all three of these things, decentralization, scalability, and security. You can only have two. Well, that was 2015. Now we're in 2023. And Algorand has solved this blockchain trilemma, excelling in all three of these objectives. But how is Algorand doing that? It's because of the pure proof of stake. So PPoS allows everyone in the Algorand network to participate in consensus. And they only need to hold a minimum of 0.01 algo, which is less than a cent at current market price. So it's very easy, very accessible for anyone to join as a validator. Now, the problem comes here, because when you have more people participating in consensus, that's more people that you need to communicate with and agree with on what transactions come to the blockchain. And that's gonna slow down the blockchain. But how is Algorand so fast then? Well, the way we do this is we, we use this technology called VRF, created by Sylvie McCauley, 
It stands for verifiable random functions. And we randomly select a small group of people from the network to participate in consensus. So because it's randomly selected, everybody in the network has a chance to be selected, but only a small group of them actually do the work, making that process efficient and fast. So that's how Algorand achieves decentralization and scalability. Proof of stake also allow the Algorand blockchain to not fork. Now, forking is a situation where one blockchain suddenly becomes two different chains. And I'll talk more about this later and why this is possible, but because it can never fork, whenever a transaction, a block is added to the blockchain, that block is instantly final, meaning it cannot be changed or deleted. So how fast is Algorand? Algorand cur can ha currently can handle about 10,000 transactions per second. And to put that, put that into perspective, a Visa handles about 1,700 transactions per second on average. Now, yesterday someone asked me, what about like Black Friday sales? And I looked up and it seems like even in those busy times, it goes up to 4,000 transactions per second. So Algorand is built for global usage. The current block time, so the time for your transaction to be included in the block chain, is 3.4 seconds. And as soon as that block is added to the blockchain, it's instantly final. And this is a unique, powerful feature that Algorand provides. So let's touch on this instant final, finality bit a little bit more. So unlike, you know, we assume that when the block is added to the blockchain, we, we would think it should be finalized, right? It's in the blockchain. But the problem is, that depending on what consensus protocol you use, there's a chance that two blocks be added to the blockchain at the same time. And it's just purely by chance. Now, when this happens, both of these blocks are true because they went through the consensus mechanism. So now the network of computers running this network have to make a decision on what blockchain is true. So they start building on the chain that they think is true. And as time goes by, more and more people are gonna choose one chain, making it longer, and the shorter chain, all of the transactions within that shorter chain gets canceled. So this is why these blockchains recommend at least six or seven blocks, you wait for six or seven blocks to be 100% certain that your transaction went through. And this is an uncertainty that you, as a developer, need to deal with. You have two options. One, take the risk, say in the front-end UI that your transaction got executed, but take the risk that it might get canceled later and get all the hatred from your users. But this is not an option for financial applications. So you play it safe, wait six or seven blocks. Now for Ethereum, it has a block time of 15 seconds. But if you have to wait six blocks, that's a minute and a half. So if you go to a coffee shop, buy a cup of coffee with Ethereum, you're gonna be standing there waiting for a minute and a half for your transaction to go through, making everyone behind you in line very angry. On Algorand, because of instant finality, there is no uncertainty. When your transaction is included in the blockchain, it's finalized and therefore, it will always get executed in 3.4 seconds, which is on par with what we have today. Because Visa, it takes about two seconds. And we are constantly working on bringing this down into the two second realm. The next question you might be asking is, how do you write the smart contract? Because every blockchain has different smart contract languages. Now currently on the, the algorithm blockchain, there are two high level smart contract languages that you can use. One is PyTeal wrapped with the Beaker framework, which is a smart contract language that it has a Python-like syntax. So if you're a Python developer, this should be very familiar to you. TealScript is another high-level high smart contract language that is very similar to TypeScript. Now, these are the two options now, but in the next coming months, we are actually gonna be moving away from PyTeal and allowing our developers to build Algorand smart contracts with pure Python. So if you're a Python developer, you won't have to learn a completely new smart contract language to be able to build a smart contract on Algorand you already know how to do so. But if you're a TypeScript or a JavaScript developer, don't worry, we got you. There's a high-level language called TealScript. Now, this isn't pure TypeScript, 
but it's so similar to TypeScript that you may not feel the difference. When this first launched, I had to learn this because I have to teach this to people. And I was just building a simple AMM, a DeFi smart contract with TealScript. And I never worked with TealScript before, don't know how the syntax works, I just learned on the fly. Well, on my first try, I was able to write a functioning, fully a working AMM smart contract in TealScript in under four hours. It was my first time trying. And the syntax was so similar to TypeScript that I was almost confused of writing a TypeScript code. So this is how it works under the hood. So you write your smart contract in these two different high-level high languages, and it, does, it gets compiled down into this low-level assembly code called Teal. Now, Teal is a low-level language that us humans have a hard time understanding, but the AVM, the computers, love it. And that's how the algorithm blockchain can execute all these transactions at such a high speed. So to summarize, smart contract and algorithm is easy. You know, allowing developers to write smart contract with just pure Python and not a smart contract language is unprecedented in the blockchain industry. And this is a game changer. Because this has been one of the biggest obstacles for Web2 companies or new developers coming into the blockchain realm because they had to learn a new language. Well now, if you're a Python developer, you don't have to learn a new language, you just start building. But if you're a TypeScript developer, TealScript is there for you, and it's still easy enough for you to write smart contracts. So less training, less hiring, and more building if you're building on the algorithm blockchain. Now, we, write, we wrote our smart contract, that's great, but how do we interact with it? How do I deploy the smart contract to the algorithm blockchain, and how do I call the smart contracts? For that, we use algorithm SDKs. And currently, we provide in four different languages, JavaScript, Python, Go, and Java. And if you don't like these languages, there are community SDKs in Rust, PHP, C Sharp, and more, so you can use those SDKs if you like. If you're a game developer, and if you want to make a Web3 game, you can use the Unity SDK. And you can use this to connect your game directly to the algorithm blockchain, and create permanent digital assets that live on the algorithm blockchain and use it in your game, allow people to trade these assets within your game. So this is an exciting opportunity for game developers. Next question. Is there an algorithm developer tool that makes my life easier? Because, oh man, we need all the help we can get as developers. We are lazy people. We don't want to write everything ourselves. And to answer that, yes, we have an all-in-one developer toolkit that takes you from zero to hero in a seamless manner, and we call it AlgoKit. AlgoKit launched in Q1 of 2023, so it ha still hasn't been a year. But we already have a series of features available for you. So let's go through each one of them and see what you can do with AlgoKit. Now before AlgoKit, it was a nightmare to set up your development environment, because that's the first thing you do as a developer. You set up your environment. In 2021, I was an intern at Algorand, and back then I was a junior college kid, all scared, trying to impress my coworkers. And my manager asked me to build a simple smart contract on Algorand. So I went to the developer documentation and you know, looked at how you set up your development environment, and it took me four days to set up that <laughs> developer environment. <laughs> yeah, it's not a proud story. But it, it, just, it wasn't just me because there were thousands of developers that were actually turning away from Algorand because they couldn't make the development environment work. And we've seen this in previous conferences where we had workshops. We had half of them were struggling to get the development environment working. So this was a huge problem. Well now, with AlgoKit, all you need to do is install AlgoKit, and it installs all of the dependencies and sets up, sets up the environment for you. So you don't need to manually set things up. You'll be able to do this in under 10 minutes. And yes, I recorded this. Alokit also provides a series of templates that you can use. So if you're a front-end developer, you might have worked with Create React App that creates these uh, basic code that you can work from. You can use these templates to bootstrap your project so that you don't have to start from scratch. 
Now, when you're building a blockchain application, you don't want to be building debugging in the live main environment because in the main blockchain, you're paying money for every transaction. So you don't want to be paying when you're debugging your contract. So you run up a private local blockchain on your computer that only you access, and it's free, and you can simulate what would happen in the live environment. So this is where you build and debug and develop your smart contract. Now, AlgoKit provides an easy way of running this local blockchain on your computer, and all you need to do is write a simple command called AlgoKit local net start, and it will start the local blockchain for you. AlgoKit also provides a utility framework called AlgoKit Utils. Now, remember the Algorand SDK that I talked about before? Now, that, you use that to interact with the blockchain. But it's, it's powerful, but you have to write a lot of manual code to make it work. So these AlgoKit Utils wrap that Algorand SDK, provide you, provide you with these powerful <coughs> methods that you can just use right out of the box so that you can interact with your smart contract with much less code. Now, if you're more of a web-based developer tool kind of developer, and you don't like developing with just terminals, that flow is the tool you want to use. And in that flow, you'll be able to look at all of the blockchain records, the transactions, deploy smart contracts, interact with them, and much more. All right, this is the exciting time. So I'm going to show you some code demos. Uh, is this mic working? Perfect. Now, we all know that when you do a live code demo, things go very wrong all the time. So wish me luck, <laughs> and please be nice to me if something goes wrong. All right, I'm inside my terminal, and I'm going, I have AlgoKit installed, and I'm gonna start an algorithm project with AlgoKit. So all I'm gonna do is type in AlgoKit init. Now that's gonna start the initialization process, and that's gonna show me a series of project templates that I can choose from. There are five right now, but we plan on adding more. And you can also import community templates that the community made if you want to use those. I'm going to choose the teal script one. And I'll name it Web Summit Demo. All right. That's rendering my template. And then it's asking me, do you want to run I will get Bootstrap? Now, this is the command that sets up your developer environment. So by saying yes to that, that's going to install everything for me. I don't have to manually go and install everything. And boom, just like that, it installed 526 packages for you. And lastly, it's gonna ask you if you wanna initialize a Git repository to keep track of your project. I'll say yes to that, because obviously, it's Git. All right, let's make that bigger. Can everyone read this? Is this big enough? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, so this is the teal script template, and it opened up my editor to show that project. And as you can see over here on the left, there's a lot of configuration already set up for you. But within this contracts folder, uh, we have this file called websummitdemo.algo.ts. Now this is the file that has my teal script smart contract that comes with the template. It's a simple calculator smart contract that can add and that can subtract. I mean, they should have added uh, division and multiplication, but they didn't, I don't know why. Um, but let's take a look at this do math method right here. I'm gonna make that bigger for you. But if you know TypeScript, this should look very similar to you. It's the exact same way you would define a method in TypeScript. Even look at the data types. It's the exact same you define a data type in TypeScript. Now underneath, these number string, these data types are algorithm-specific data types. But as a developer, you're writing the same code. This is why I said TealScript is not purely TypeScript, but it's so similar to TypeScript that it's, you know, it's basically the same. Okay, this template also comes with a test folder. And within the test folder, we have this test script that you can use to test your smart contract. So you can define your test for your smart contract within this file. Now, if you look at line two, we're importing allocate utils. And remember, this is that wrapper utility framework that you use to interact with the smart contract. So to run this file, all you need to do is open up a terminal, run npm, run test. And that's gonna compile my teal script contract, and then that's gonna run that uh, test script. So remember, remember, I said that these high-level languages get compiled down into teal code, a low-level low level assembly code, right? So if you look at this artifacts folder, all of these five files were auto-created 
during the compilation. So if we open this file up right here, let's see. This right here is the teal code that the AVM loves. But as you can see, it's not the easiest for us to understand. But going back to our terminal, um, yeah, so if you set up your uh, test, you'll be able to see how many tests that passed, and as a developer, we always love seeing those green checks. So th this is just, just to showcase you how um, Alloket helps you on your developer journey. You know, just by using these templates, I was able to just straight away uh, work with this default smart contract and also test it. And you can just use this, because customize it, change the smart contract, change the test script, and start building your project. All right, now let's take a look at a sample application that I created. Um, I am kind of embarrassed because it's my first time I'm showing this to people. <laughs> but I created this decentralized crowdfunding charity application that uses the blockchain to allow people to donate to these charities. Now this charity is represented by a smart contract. So you, know, you would usually do this with websites like GoFundMe where charities go and they upload their information and the GoFundMe website, the company, hosts your information, your charity for you, but they have control over that data and they control what happens on that platform. Well here, we do the exact same thing, but it's not owned by a company, but the smart contract, the application, is deployed on a decentralized blockchain that's owned, not owned by anyone. So uh, let's take a look at the code base you know, of this project. Now, this is the code base for that website. Um, I built this entire, the full stack, fully working application with a full stack template that comes with AlgoKit. And that template gives me two folders, backend and front end. Inside of the backend folder, there is a folder called smart contracts, and inside of here, you define your smart contract. So this is my charity crowdfunding smart contract written in Teal script. So let's take a look at a couple of those methods to see what it's doing. Now we have this bootstrap method here, and you pass in a bunch of these arguments, and you're basically inputting all the details of this charity application and storing it on the smart contract. So that's what the bootstrap is doing, and I'll show you how this works later when I'm showing the demo. And we have this method called fund, and this is the method that donators will be calling when they're donating to the smart contract. And what's cool about this fund method is that we have this piece of code right here. Now, I've made this crowdfunding app so that whenever someone donates to a charity, they get a proof of donation NFT, just to celebrate, you know? But what's unique about Algorand is that we have this feature called opt-ins. This feature exists because on a lot of blockchains, whenever you hold a wallet, it accepts any incoming assets. So any random person can send any random weird coin to your wallet if they want to. And those assets may hold some shady links that you do not want to click on. To prevent this, we have this opt-in feature. So you have the control of what assets that you can hold. So you first have to opt in to an asset before you can receive that asset. So this code right here is checking if the wallet has opted in to this reward NFT so that this smart contract can send that reward NFT to the donator. So that's what this code is doing. So it's checking if the wallet's opted in and then if they are opted in and they don't hold the reward NFT yet, then we send an inner transaction, which is a transaction sent by the smart contract. So smart contract can initiate um, transactions as well. And it's gonna send that reward NFT, one of it, uh, amount set to one to the person donating. All right, let's go to this uh, site and show you the demo. Hope it works. All right, first I'm gonna connect the wallet. Um, right now this uh, website is configured to connect to my local blockchain. It's running on my computer right now. So I'm gonna connect to my local now wallet. And then I'm gonna use this wallet to start a charity. Now I'm gonna input some charity details here and I'll call it save the world. Fun goal, 100 algos, minimum donation, one algo. And description, I'll say this is a charity to save the world. All right, I'm gonna upload an image for that charity and also let's input some details for the NFT. So save the world, NFT. And I'll unit name as STW, total amount, 100. Okay, and I'll upload this image for that NFT. Now when I hit this create fundraiser, 
I see this pop-up sign. And because I'm connected to the local net, it's just showing this uh, local host uh, pop-up. But if you're connected to testnet or mainnet, you'll be connected to whatever wallet that you're using. Um, and if I click this button, I'm signing the transaction that's deploying the charity smart contract. So right now, it's being deployed to my local blockchain running on my computer. After that's completed, it's going to ask me to sign another transaction. And this is the transaction that's calling the bootstrap method that I talked about before. And this is where I'm going to be inputting all of the details that I put in here into the smart contract. OK, we see a message successfully created. Let's go back to the home page, and boom, now we see the charity application here. Whew, it worked. OK. <laughs> so you can see all of the uh, information here. So let's try donating. So minimum donation is one algo, so I'll just donate one algo. And if I hit donate, it's going to ask me, do you want to opt into the reward NFT? Now, I gave the donators this option to choose so because whenever you opt into an asset, you have to um, lock up a, certain, a, a little amount of algo to buy the storage on the blockchain to hold that asset. Because you know, blockchain is limited, and every storage is expensive. So you lock up 0.1 algo to hold one asset. And it's a small amount, but some people may not want to do that. So they can decline and not receive the reward NFT and just donate. But I want it, so I'll say yes. And this is going to opt into the asset. And then now we're going to sign all these transactions and donate to the charity. Now, I want to see all these activities happening on the blockchain. Now, how do I do that? Well, what's great about blockchains is that all of these transactions are publicly available to everyone. So I intentionally console logged uh, all of these uh, information over here. And this is where you use that flow. So the deployed charity smart contract has an application ID of 1007. So I'll come to that flow, and it has an explore. This is right now configured to my local blockchain. And I'm going to type in 1007 here. And that's going to show me the charity smart contract information that we just deployed. So all of the global state that we set here, um, who created it, the associated application account that can receive and pay uh, ASAs and algos. So if I go into this account, you'll see that the balance is 1.2. Now, ignore the 0.2 because that's minimum balance. That's what I talked about before. But what's important is that if you look over here on this line, we see a payment transaction of one algo that this account received. And that was the donation that we made at the front end. So let's click on this wallet address that's donated to the charity. Now, this is all the information that you can uh, see for this wallet. But if you go to the assets page, you can see that it received its reward NFT for, fun, for donating to charity. And if you click on the NFT and view as NFT, you can see all the information for this NFT, the name, the image, who created it, how many supplies there are, and all the transactions regarding this asset. So blockchain is great because all of these transactions are available for you, and you can um, this is one of the reasons why blockchain applications are transparent, because anyone can verify all of these information. Because when they claim that they've done something, you yourself can go to the blockchain explorer and verify yourself. All right, how are we doing on time? I have time till. When do I have to finish? Do you remember? Okay. I think we have about 15 minutes more. OK, let's continue. So next question you might be asking, thank you, is, are these all sound great, but are there a lot of res uh, good educational resources that I can use to learn them? The first resource that I recommend that you go watch is the Algorand Developers YouTube channel. So you can look up Algorand Developers, and you will be able to find their channel. So please like and subscribe and hit that notification. <laughs> I'm sounding like a YouTuber now. <laughs> but we post tutorials, um, code demos, concept overviews, anything a developer would be interested in, we post it on this channel. So if you want to keep up with the latest news, learn how to build on it on the blockchain, this is where you want to go. Now, if you're more of an interactive learner, you can attend our regular boot camps where um, and there are two versions, intermediate and beginner. And it's also done in English and Spanish. So you can go to these sessions, interact with the instructor, ask questions, get them answered on the spot. 
Now, if you want to learn all the nitty gritty, know all of the details, you want to go to the go to the documentation. It has everything that you need to know as a developer. But there's a lot of information in here, and it takes time to look through all of it. So we implemented a ChatGPT-like AI tool where you can directly ask the documentation your question, and it will answer it for you. So here I'm asking, how do you send the algo using the JavaScript SDK? And it gave me an answer with a working code snippet. So this is a tool that you can use as well. Now, if you have a burning question, you can't solve this bug that you have, you want to come to the Discord channel. Because this is where the developer relations team, that includes me, and our vibrant developer community lives and breathe. So you can go to one of these channels, ask a question, and someone from the community is going to answer for you because we have such a great uh, developer community that they're just so happy to help each other. And if they don't, then the developer relations team will hop on and help you. So join the Discord channel. And if, even if you're not not, not technical person, you know, we have a lot of people here just talking about Algorand and what's happening. So it's just a fun place to be in. Now, if you prefer to look at some real code, a working code base, and you just want to copy it and play around with it, and that's the best way you learn, you want to head to the developer relations at Algorand GitHub, where we have a lot of sample applications. So the application that I just showed you today is on there, so you can go check it out. And you know some other sample code that you can reference. And this is my personal favorite way of learning Algorand. Now, I have all of the links here for you. And I'm at the end of the slide, I have a QR code that you can scan that will take you to this Google Slide Deck and give you access to all the information that I shared with you today. Now, I want to end this presentation with a final note. Algorand is a relatively new chain. It launched in 2019. OK, maybe not so uh, new. <laughs> it's been four years. OK, Whew, time flies. Um, but even just a year ago, we didn't have a good high-level smart contract language that developers can use. We didn't have developer tools like AlgoKit. It launched in Q1 of 2023. I would go to these conferences, confidently talk about the Algorand blockchain protocol, because it's one of the most powerful and well-designed blockchains designed by a renowned cryptographer, Sylvia McCauley. But when it comes to the developer experience, it was a completely different story. Now, a year has gone by. We're at the end of 2023. Now we have a high-level smart contract language like TealScript, allowing you to write smart contract with a language that's almost similar to TypeScript. In a couple months, you won't even have to learn a new language. If you're a Python developer, you already know how to build on the algorithm blockchain. And this is unprecedented. It's a complete game changer that will onboard millions of developers to the blockchain realm. Now we have developer tools like AlgoKit that takes you from the start to the end in a seamless manner. Algorand is finally at a stage where I can confidently tell you that the both Algorand blockchain protocol and the developer experience is top in the industry. So I hope that after this presentation, you give Algorand another look. Bring your amazing ideas to this platform and build on a blockchain that's ready, fit for purpose, and powerful to build your next big thing in the 21st century. Thank you.